Well, back in 1994, Dennis Weir, who is a professor in physics in the School of Physics in Trinity, and his PhD student at the time, Robert Phelan, they uh, addressed the problem of what is the ideal structure of foam. And uh, this goes back to a problem posed by Lord Kelvin in the 19th century. And uh, Dennis and Robert looked at this again and using computer simulations found quickly that there is an alternative structure available, better, which is better than Kelvin's structure. Now this is a computer simulation and ever since people here in, in, in our group and in other laboratories all over the world have tried to actually make that structure using real soap bubbles because you can make the Kelvin structure you think you should make the Wefelian structure as well. But that proved very tricky and nobody had ever succeeded to date. And um, this has to do with certain boundary conditions that need to be met. The Kelvin structure you can make against the flat wall and the Wefelian structure you can't do. Then about six or seven months ago I received an email from an uh, Italian researcher whom I had met before and I knew he was working on, on that problem as well. And he emailed me and he said, Stefan, I have an idea how to make that structure using a template. And uh, I'd like to do this in your lab because you have the expertise here and uh, the know-how how to do these things. So I invited him over and uh, I was in lucky position to have some funding from SFI to do this. And uh, he was here for two months and he was a very successful visit. Now, why was it successful? We, we were able, uh, first of all, we were able to work together with, with Ken Brackey, who performed further computer simulations for us. And then uh, he worked out the ideal surface that is needed to trigger the formation of that structure. Now, how does one make such a structure? Well, we, we create bubbles, ordinary soap bubbles, which I, and um, then we make a little box which is the template, and we fill up that template with these bubbles. Now there you might think, well, why haven't you done that earlier? But uh, it's only now that we are able to make such detailed structure templates uh, with the help of our colleagues in the Trinity Nanoscience Institute in, in, in Cran. So there you can see that is really the new technology which allowed us to make progress in, in physics. So quite quickly when we went to the lab and we had our, our templates made, we looked at the samples and we could say, and in particular Ruggiero, because he spent so much time looking at these things, why well, this is the weird feeling structure. And we were able to produce it many, many times, produced a number of photographs using bubbles, which are uh, a few millimeters in diameter uh, or, or, or slightly, slightly larger and using samples of up to 1500 bubbles. So not only the bubbles in contact with the surface are regularly arranged, that would be well, what expected, but you get, we had up to six layers of bubbles which form. So they're away from the surface, away from the template. So we can really say we created a bulk weir feeling structure. But you might also wonder what can one do with such a thing? I'm very much into sort of the principles of physics, so my first thing would be there is a nice mathematical problem and we solved it. it, it it's sort of really a, a theoretical problem that we looked at and we managed to make. And for me, this is already this is a big success story. But I'm aware that one can do other things with it. And uh, namely, one can solidify such samples. It's, it's hard to do, but we've done something like this in the past. So you could have then a solid sample and um, with a very regular ordered structure. And people are interested in using this uh, for filters, for chemical processes, for catalysts, for example, and also what's called for photonic crystals, where one sends light through structures like that. Now one would have to make them smaller and they require much more work to do this, but you can see that there are a couple of possibilities that can arise. And then there's of course always the completely unexpected. Uh, the weird feeling structure was used uh, to build the water cube in Beijing. Now it has really nothing to do with science, it's just the architects who are interested in the, in the type of structure 
uh, in, in sort of optical the optics of that structure. But yet again, something really unexpected came came out of that. Well, the paper is now published in Philosophical Magazine. Incidentally, that's the same journal that published Kelvin's original work and also Dennis Weir and Robert Sphelan work. So you could say this is the third part, the final part in the trilogy. The first author of the paper is Ruggiero Gabrieli from the University of Trento, who really drove home that, that project. Then there is my PhD student, Aaron Marr, who is funded by Science Foundation Ireland. There's Dennis Weir. There is Ken Bracke, who did the computer simulations. And then there's myself, who is the leader of the group Foams and Complex Systems. I've been interested in foams for a very long time now, both applied aspects of the subject, things of industrial relevance, and more abstruse and academic things. And this whole business of the weir Feynman foam probably lies at the academic end of the subject. In 1887, Lord Kelvin was lying in bed when he first took an interest in the subject, and he asked a question that we've been discussing ever since and he gave a conjectural answer to it. The question was, what structure should a foam of equal sized bubbles take? What structure would have the lowest energy? Mathematicians and biologists and others have been interested in this ever since. But well, we've always had difficulty with it, partly theoretically, but also because we couldn't make uh, even Kelvin's structure in the laboratory. So Kelvin proposed a rather simple structure, and although it was a really brilliant piece of work, it has turned out that he was wrong. There is at least one counterexample of lower energy than his, and that's the one that we found in 1993 and published in 1994. A new student, Robert Feeland, had just joined our group, and he was lucky enough to be given a project uh, that paid off very rapidly. I asked him, would he look at the Kevin Kelvin structure and some possible rivals to it, which might have lower energy? And almost instantly, he was able, with some suggestions, to produce the weir Feeling structure, which was 0.3% lower in energy that, than Kelvin's. And what Robert and I then published was the structure that we show here in this stainless steel sculpture. It's a little hard to describe it quickly, but it, it's, it's a relatively complicated arrangement of two different kinds of soap bubbles, which in the foam take the form of polyhedral cells. This is a slightly simplified version because some of these faces should be slightly curved in a rather complex way but it certainly serves to illustrate the structure, and in particular, that it's almost entirely made up of five-fold rings, faces, pentagonal faces, and this fascinates a lot of people, and it is certainly something to do with the fact that it is the optimum structure. As far as we know, it's the lowest energy structure of a foam.